This program is simulcast on WRFPLP 101.9 FM. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> Appreciate it. We have a couple of new people here today, so my thanks to them as well, or at least one new person here today after feedback last time on stakeholders. Um, we may have a couple of people straggle in. I thought we were going to have a fuller team. We have a few people missing, so hopefully they didn't go to the RCU building and got stymied, but um, we'll see how it goes. Um, we are um, having our second meeting. So um, again, a reminder. This is the same slide that you saw the first time about why we're here. So the reminder is that we're looking at the problem and potential solutions through cooperative dialogue, research and development of recommendations to promote ownership of the changes to improve public good order. Again, related to high-risk substance use was the frame of the conversation from the get-go. This comes right from City Council. Um, just a quick review of what we did last time to remind all of us what we um, talked about and how that discussion went. Um, again, there was a little background on the task force formation. We talked a little bit about the problem. So we looked at data. We, you guys talked in tables about your perception of the problem. We got stakeholder feedback from a broad range of perspectives to think about what is the problem. Um, and then we discussed additional stakeholders. And I'll just tell you, this, this is from the last meeting. We talked about landlords, human services, and other parts of the city of Eau Claire coming to the table. Um, my challenge of getting a hold of people, but we did get someone from human services. And when we do an introduction, she'll introduce herself. And um, contact with a landlord who may or may not be able to make it today. We thought that he was going to make it for the beginning of the meeting. That was the communication, but we'll see. Otherwise, do know that that stakeholder discussion was important, and we're working on it. Um, these are some of the words you used after at the end of the meeting. And we'll be doing the same kind of discussion again about what do you think and how did it go. So our goal is that we're learning with each meeting. Um, we're going to do the same introductions. I think part of the ability for us to work together is to get to know each other and build some trust. And so one of the ways you do that is by reminding everybody who you are and why you're here. So. You all came back because this was the second meeting of a group. Most of you were at the first meeting to say, um, what do we think is the issue related to unsafe alcohol use? Um, today, as we pitched in our conversation last time, we're really going to start talking about some solutions. So um, if, again, we can go around the room quickly, we don't want to take all of our time doing this, but who you are and what organization you represent, um, and then very simply, why is this meeting important to you? No, and, 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 but, 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 you know, not multiple reasons, but one reason. So my example again, I'm Liska, I'm the moderator, facilitator, and I am looking forward to hearing possible next steps. Okay, so that's my example to you. Um, we will go around the room. Do you guys want to start at this table? Sure. My name Thank you. <laughs> my name is David Sprick. I'm chief of university police. And uh, this meeting, these meetings are important to me because the university, in some way, shape, or form, or our students, or some of our students, are, are out kind of in the community now, in the city of Eau Claire, so we want to be good community partners. Thanks. I'm Nick Ashman. I'm here to represent the historic Randall Park Neighborhood Association. And I'm basically looking forward to what kind of solutions people are bringing forward to the table for this particular meeting. I'm the uh, co-chair of the High Risk Victim Prevention Action Team, and also help educator at the university. And I'm here to create a healthier community. Thanks, Kitty. How about in the back? I'm Chair Laird. I'm a deputy chief of the Patrol Division for the city of Eau And I am really interested to hear some of the feedback on some solutions and how we can move forward. Thanks. Kevin Rosenberg. I'm the chair of the Third Ward Neighborhood Association. I'm here because uh, of our proximity to the university, it's obvious the importance to us as a good uh, neighborhood. I'm Austin O'Branson. I'm uh, with the Student Senate at UWC, and uh, I'm very concerned with neighborhood safety, especially in the neighborhood we live in. So, yeah. Uh, Zach Arbold, I am with uh, CBTC and the 
SGA president there. Um, I'm really interested to kind of dig more deep into what kind of solutions we can do to uh, resolve this kind of problem that's happening. Thank you. My name is Jeff Hart. I work with the teams at Pickle and the Pioneer Tavern on Water Street. And we are excited to be a part of creating a better solution. We talked last week about being getting better, but making things better as we did as we will. Thanks. Go ahead, Tom. Tom Platt. Uh, owner of Rightway Shuttle. I'm here to gather more information. Dave Olson, I'm the Tavern League, and I'm here to hear steps on how we can make the community better. Steve Nick, City Attorney, and uh, I'm here because uh, excessive alcohol consumption has consistently been an individual neighborhood and uh, broader community public safety concern for the entire time I've been on the island. Looking for ways to address that. I'm Jen Harder. I'm with uh, DHS and the CCS program. I'm a substance use professional. And the deputy director told me this morning that um, you guys uh, could use a voice of somebody who has experience in treatment of substance use disorder. Thanks, Jen, for being here on very short notice. DHS is Department of Human Services, so county Department of Human Service, service providers to people that have substance use disorder. So, yeah. I'm uh, Alan Bertrand. Uh, Smire, and I'm here from the historic Randall Park neighborhood, but on behalf of the new um, revitalization corporation, our concern is improving the housing and the health and the safety. And so all these solutions will help. Brandon Yates, I'm the UWBC student body president elect, and I'm here to see how the students can partner with the community. Brandon just found that out, so congratulations to him. He just was elected to that. So Dale, do you want to join a table up front? OK, we've got space. So um, thank you, everybody. Again, I think it's good reminders about you know, to have to say out loud what we're doing here today. Um, quick walk through your agenda. You should have a half sheet of paper if you want that to remind you of what we are doing. But we are going to talk through briefly the problem again to just confirm that my summary of the problem matches what you thought we left with. And I did a very quick version of that, which you see in some of the materials. We're going to talk a little bit about prevention strategies. And you got a little snippet of information in advance from me about that. Um, we're going to spend most of our time brainstorming solutions. So this is an opportunity to be creative, to think about things that you've either heard of other communities doing. If you looked at any of the attachments that were, or the, the links that were in the email, things that you think, oh, that looks interesting. Um, things that you know neighborhood has tried and maybe has or hasn't been successful with, or the city has tried and has or hasn't been successful with. So really, all things on the table as possibilities. You're going to talk in small groups about that, and we're, then we're going to share. Um, we're going to specifically talk about one of those strategies, which we talked about last time, which was the public good order ordinance that was forwarded to the city. And we're going to, like we will with the other strategies that you guys brainstormed, today we're going to do a little pro, con, positive, negative, things that so make sense for it, things that are challenging for you related to that. Lots of feedback. For those of you that weren't at the public hearing about that specific ordinance, lots of feedback was given, some about process and some about content. And today, we're going to talk about the content piece of it a little bit more, because frankly, a lot of it was process feedback at the city council. Um, so as one potential strategy in the great toolbox or the puzzle of possible strategies, we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. And then plan our next steps. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Does that match what you thought you were going to do today? 
Yes? So I will challenge back to some of you that said you were here to listen is to say, you're here to work. We're going to be asking you to share your ideas. So in your tables, that's really what the hope is, is that you really dig deep and do some work. Um, if we have small groups, we may decide to regroup so there are a few more people at the table, and we'll make that decision shortly. Um, but really, that's the goal, is to have lots of conversation in your tables. So jumping into content. The first slide that you see here, and it's reflected on some of the handouts that you have, is really to try and have the next step of the conversation being how can we come up with some solutions to the problems that we identified in the last meeting. So in taking all of the stuff that was written on the flip charts and trying to synthesize it down to say how can we how can we manage this better as a group conversation around potential strategies or solutions? The two things that jumped out to me were that there was lots of conversation around neighborhood disruption and disorder, all kinds of different things that came out related to substance use, alcohol and other substances. And I think a couple of people said, you know, it's not just alcohol that creates some of this disorder. So, you know, that came up from a number of folks. So neighborhood disruption disorder with things like noise and property issues and damage and home invasion and large out of control parties, those kinds of things as kind of neighborhood focused issues. And we could add probably a lot more descriptors. The other grouping that I put together were the, the feedback around um, unsafe substance use resulting in death and in injury and in risky behavior. So people said things like, you know, sexual assault or I'm worried about walking home at night if, you know, if someone's not in a safe position and not able to remember that they could get physically assaulted or sexually assaulted falls, including somebody mentioned, you know, the bridge at the university. But we know there's lots of injury related hospitalizations. That was one of the data points that you saw from me um, related to alcohol misuse and other substance. So falls, death, injury, car crashes. Some of this coming from the data, some of it coming from you guys. All of it came from you guys, but also supported by a lot of the data that we talked through last time. Does this capture the idea of alcohol and other substance misuse, the problem, as you remember it from our conversation? Is there something missing? Is this not quite right? Or does this Tell me, give me some feedback on whether or not, because from here on in, we're going to talk about solutions. And you'll see we're going to come up with solutions related to neighborhood disruption disorder and solutions related to all of the death, injury, risky behavior kind of um, outcomes. I think it's often vague. It, it is right now vague. So help me understand why vague is not helpful to you in the next step of the conversation. I mean, don't, large, a large out of control party, wouldn't we have to define what a large, what is that? I think if we decide to work on a strategy, I think in order to come up with a solution that has, makes a difference, we'd have to more clearly define what that problem is and come up with a solution. I think I was trying to, I mean, I could have just put neighborhood disruption, but some people described, for example, parties where a bunch of people arrive to and the people that are hosting the party don't necessarily want them there. Or neighborhood people saying we have a huge party across the street from our house and it's going until 2 in the morning. Um, so it was described as feedback from law enforcement and some neighborhoods. Not None of these things right now, I mean we don't, we had data for some of them but it's not in this slide. So part of this is uh, the problem for the next step is to start thinking about if we think neighborhood disruption and risky behavior, death, and injury are problems in this community, that's a question. I think we can dig into very specifically defining them as we come up with solutions. Is that fair? Yeah? OK. Brandon. Well, I, just, I would agree that it's vague. And then when you go in to talk about policy, and can we talk about the public good order now? Nope. Nope. We're going to talk about that later. This a whole, really, the grounding of today is that we want to generate ideas and solutions. And that may be one of them that bubbles up, but not for discussion yet. You'll have time to talk about that. So right now, it's just problem identification and confirming what you guys, we, remember, we had massive flip charts. So I saw your hand next, and then Margot. Yeah. Two weeks of kind of 
tons of ground questions and answers. People are asking me, so I'm down there quite a bit. The front sight focus of the word alcohol is understandably up there. Mm -hmm. But the other substances, you know, the question I was getting asked is how many of those stats that you gave us weren't just alcohol related, but mm -hmm. they're in the hospital because of the Coke and alcohol. Mm -hmm. Does it just flow into the alcohol chart? I mean, mm -hmm. there's drug bust going on on Water Street, neighborhood, Randall Park, weekly. Yeah. Every other week. Sure. That's. Can you somehow make it less front site focused on just alcohol. Mm -hmm. Talk about marijuana. Talk about medicine. Sure. I, I think again why it says now alcohol and other substance is partly from the feedback from this group that some of you said this is part of the issue is that it's bigger. Um, typically solutions. Um, are, depending on what prevention solution you're looking at, you can, it may impact all kinds of unsafe use of substances. Um, there may be some specific things related to alcohol, and this did generate out of some conversation around alcohol. The data that you saw is alcohol specific. Um, there's lots of data on other substances. If that would be supportive of um, people's conversation, we could talk about that as well. So, but good question. Um, Part of why it's framed this way is there are outcomes related to neighborhood disruption disorder that relate to all kinds of substances, including alcohol, and death, injury, and risky behavior outcomes also exist because of those. We know that alcohol use in this community is much higher than in other comparable communities. So part of the look at alcohol is that we are different. Not that that's the only problem or not that that's the only thing that we should come up with when we look at what solutions should we look at. But when we talk about strategies, we do know alcohol is a specific issue. And it's different than other places in Wisconsin and other states. So that was part of the data that we shared. So Margo, yeah. I heard and what we talked about at the table last time was this, this culture yeah. of overuse. use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're talking about, whether it's college campuses or community mm -hmm. festivals, it, it's just this pressure yep. to have it, and in some students' voices was over and Yeah, yeah, and I almost put culture as a third one, and I'm like, well, culture contributes to some of these outcomes, so I think we could talk about culture distinctly if you'd like. So that's, the, it was one of the pieces that I saw in lots of the feedback as well, yeah. Are we planning on changing the culture of OPEC? Well, like, that's. That, that's mm -hmm. the, do you feasibly see it happening? Well, I think that could be something that you guys talk through at tables. So if we add that as a third potential problem is the general culture, you could, you could hash that through a little bit as we have table conversations. Yeah. Could you also go over the noise part? Like, can you go more in depth with noise? Uh, again, the intent of this was not. It was one of the things that came up from all of the groups was very loud, disruptive behavior, either by individuals, by groups, by parties, as being one of the things seen by people that were intoxicated or using substances to an extreme. Yeah. Yep. Does anybody have a problem with this being the starting point and potentially adding culture as another conversation topic as you're at your tables, at least to see where we go with it? I mean, part of this is just figuring it out. Yeah. With property disorder, are you talking about a uh, non-Kalita party? Potentially. That was one of the, if you remember, that was one of the pieces of feedback that came out from people as neighborhood people saying, yards look disastrous. So. Well, that It's possible it has been tied to alcohol-related behavior. So you're right, and that's part of what you guys can talk about when you look at these and say, what are the issues? Lots of conversation potential about both of those. So yeah, Al. If I would suggest that we do add culture as a third okay. topic at this time, because I think it plays a big role. Yeah. And again, this is not to, it's, it's the bigger picture frame for your next step of your conversation. So not right now to say how much noise, how loud the noise, or how much you know, disorder, or was that because of alcohol. You guys can talk about that at your table. These were meant to just help clarify what kind of was in that bucket and was put together from all, because we didn't write down 
every single topic that you came up with in the discussion last week. That was hundreds of different items. We tried, I tried to group them. So. All right, so when we get to the discussion about next steps, I'll be asking you to add culture, and we'll see how that goes. I, I went back and forth and hesitated about it, so um, I appreciate that you guys um, want to walk through that. Um, so we are talking about solutions. Um, so I sent to you via email. Did, first of all, if you did not get my email last week, Tuesday, does that sound right? No, Thursday, something. Please make sure you leave your email so we can get materials to you. Um, but this, the chart on the left was in your email as a way to start thinking about what strategies could we use to change the problems that we've identified. Um, I challenged all of you that if the only thing you came up with today was that we have to teach a class on safe alcohol use, if that's the only solution was education of an individual or a parent telling their kid not to drink or not to use drugs excessively, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be okay with that, that we had to come up with more than just an education strategy. That can be part of it, but that can't be the only thing you come up with. So that was the reason to send you, this is a national model from the Prevention Institute of all different ways to impact outcomes for health issues. Um, today, just for simplicity, I'm not asking you to come up with a, an example in each of six, as I break the, of all these six. I grouped them together into strategies related to influencing law and policy. So that could be at a city level, that could be at a state level, though it's a bit more challenging, but could be at either. Um, the three middle ones, five, four, and three, were grouped on changing community and organizational practices. And the bottom ones are around educating community and individuals. Okay, so I'm going to be asking, and if you share at your table the piece of paper that's got the yellow at the top, if you don't have that, that's gonna be your worksheet for the next step. And I'm gonna walk through an example. Because sometimes it's hard to, I think, get yourself thinking about what, what do we mean by strategies. So on your worksheet, the place where you have to add culture is where it says other in the yellow. So why doesn't everybody do that? So hand that out and put culture in that spot that says other. At your table, then, you're going to have some time to work. Does everybody have that sheet of paper? Yeah? You're going to have some time to work to fill out those, those nine blocks, okay? Not that you'll have something for every one of them, but the goal is to have something in more than one box, okay? Is that fair? So during your time talking is really push each other like, what could that look like and what would creative options be? If you're stuck and you need some help, let me know and we'll walk, I'll walk around and, and give you some support. So again, if you only say we need to, you know, tell college students to stop you know, screaming on the corner at night. That's, that's not going to be the only strategy that I'll be okay with, okay, if you put it in this box. So you might put it there, and that's okay. Doing some education of new freshmen when they arrive on campus is a fine strategy, but not the only one, okay, as one example. Um, if you say that, I don't know, if you, if you fill out just one, if you say the only solution is that we, you know, have a law in the city of Eau Claire that nobody ever gets to drink again, which please don't put that down, <laughs> that you know, to solve death and injury related to alcohol misuse, that can't be your only strategy. You can brainstorm that strategy if you'd like, but I don't know that we'll go very far. But do you see how we want some different examples? I'll use um, a car fatality and seatbelt example just to kind of frame what, do we, what am I actually talking about for each of these kinds. So, um, how many people wore their seatbelt when they arrived here? Okay, if you didn't drive, then you may not have worn your seatbelt, but I would highly encourage you to wear your seatbelt. Um, and there's been really effective intervention that's happened related to seatbelt use. If you grew up in the you know, 60s, um, you may not have ever worn a seatbelt. I remember driving to Nebraska back and forth in the back of a, you know, of a station wagon and you know, my parents let us go at it in the back. So it's changed and it's because of fatalities, crash fatalities. Luckily nobody in my family crashed and I'm still alive, but it could have happened. 
So law and policy, we've, had, we've got strong federal and state legislation mandating seatbelt use in all different ways, shapes, and forms. That there's, a, a, there's a law that you have to wear your seatbelt in Wisconsin. We have all kinds of organizational and community practices that have happened over time, including an organizational practice by car companies to make the car ding if you don't, if you don't actually put your seatbelt on, right? Ding, 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 until you get your seatbelt on. That's an organizational change that happened. It's not a law or policy, although I'm not sh quite sure. that There might be a law to build cars that way now, but at least when it started, it was related to that organization making a decision. Employers, typically in their employee handbook, say if you're driving for employment reasons, you have to wear a seatbelt. So that's, an, that's again an organizational decision. Under educating at the community and individual level, there's everything from driver's ed training, where you learn to wear your seatbelt, to community billboards, which there's one in Eau Claire right now about buckling your seatbelt. And sometimes there's flashing signs along the road that say, wear your seatbelt, buckle up kind of campaigns. Those are community educational efforts. Um, it's also a community educational effort if you're a parent and you buckle yourself in and you tell your kids to buckle in or you're not driving the car. So do you see that kind of spectrum of interventions? That's why the Prevention Institute calls it a spectrum of interventions. Because really, all of those things together make a difference. It's not just one strategy that's going to solve the problem. <clears throat> one of the reasons, you know, Brandon brought up the public good order ordinance, that we're not starting with, let's look at this specific ordinance, is that this, the goal of this task force very broadly was to come up with what are the possible solutions. And we're going to keep talking about those. Do know that. We will talk about the public good order ordinance at the end of the discussion today. But, and that could be one of the solutions that you put in as a policy change related to neighborhood disruption, for example. You could just you know, write in public intoxication ordinance as one of the strategies. But again, that can't be the only thing that you have on your worksheet. Does that give people, is that our wheels turning? Yeah? All right. So. In your groups, um, using that worksheet, I want you to first just have quiet time to jot down some ideas. When I'll give you about five minutes for that and kind of watch the group. But just sit uh, on your own, just writing down some ideas. If you were able to do some of this work th last week and be thinking about things, add those to your piece of paper. I'll then be asking you to identify someone at your table that will record things for the table so we can collect those and make sure we have a good documentation of what your table talked about and then someone to report. So we're going to be, we're going to be doing that same process where some of you guys will share what kind of strategies you came up with. Okay? You'll have a good chunk of time to do this. This is the meat of the meeting, is to really spend time at your tables talking um, and, um, and sharing. Who has questions? People feel good? All right. If you have questions, let me know. Um, I'm going to give you about five minutes to just quietly think about options and write things down, OK?
One of the things I will check in with after we do sharing is whether or not any of the ideas that you wrote down were not shared by any of the other tables and you'll have an opportunity to call that out. And I get that it looks like there's active conversation at every table, so that's wonderful. Um, and if you think about ideas after today, this is not the end. There's lots of possibility for next steps, so do know that as well. So don't leave here frustrated that you didn't get to share all your ideas, all right? We will make sure that we get that kind of feedback. Um, what I'm asked to have you do is, uh, whoever you identified as a spokesperson, we're going to go around the room and talk about each problem um, as, as a single. So we'll start with neighborhood disruption disorder just because that's the first on your sheet. Then we'll go to the death, injury, risky behavior, and then we'll go to culture just because those are the columns on your page, okay? So I'm going to ask, um, and why don't we start in the middle this time since we haven't started with a middle group yet, um, to share with us some of your thoughts on strategies to deal with a problem related to substance use and alcohol use misuse that impacts neighborhood disruption and disorder. So who's, this, who's your spokesperson? You can either go and order down your list, you can choose to share whatever you came up with for any of the strategies related to this problem. We didn't have near enough time, but... <laughs> okay, so I'm hearing you. Um, we heard a lot about lead by example, um, chambers for alcohol at events, and then there are different um, events that have alcohol. Most of our communities have alcohol. Um, so we have a lot of alcohol. There was some talk under death and injury about um, how, how. So we're doing one problem at a time. Yeah. So just neighborhood disruption disorder. Disruption. Yep. Anything else that you guys came up with around neighborhood disruption disorder? Yeah, and traffic to parties, we don't know how that happens. But. OK, <laughs> so managing traffic to parties. And um, education and reminders on social media to be quiet and respectful and not to OK, social media re reminders. OK, anything else, anything that you guys had on your pa pieces of paper in any of the three big picture ways that we can have strategy that wasn't shared by your group already for just for this problem. That capture your conversation and your things. I'm sorry. Size. Signs. I'm sorry. Signs and ah. Okay, we'll 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 go around. Yep, and it depends. Again, alcohol and substance use is Again, not just focused on college kids, so I want to make sure that we are not just focusing our strategies on just college kids, okay? Alcohol misuse and the outcomes are really, yes, we see it in college kids, and we're not, you know, that's not the, um, it's not that that isn't an issue, but we see alcohol misuse in every age group, and the data really strongly supports that. So, so schools and others doing reminders and um, media messages as different kind of, okay. Anything else? Your table. Okay, you guys. Start with just doing each column. Each column. 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 Okay. Anything down. I'm a terrible documenter. I'm going to have to have multiple pages on my flip chart, but go ahead. A column of things that are different than these. So you don't have to give all of the things, but if you have different ideas for neighborhood disruption that were talked about in your group, please share them. Sure. So, um, Reduction in alcohol outlet density. Okay. Um, there could be an uh, enhancement of licensing process, the licensing process by which establishments um, initially apply for or renew their alcohol licenses. So, um, some kind of system of, you know, if you um, have failed compliance checks or, you know, a lot of fights coming out of your establishment that. Somehow that's incorporated, incorporated into how the licensing process works. But I'm not sure exactly the ins and outs of licensing process, but mm -hmm. that was something that came up. 
Okay, at an establishment level. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, sorry, there was a lot of things we talked about. Um, so, some um, feedback tools, they're called interactive feedback tools. Um, so, like, that's at individual level. So, like, at the university, we have e checkup, you know, e chug. Um, so, requiring that for all students. Uh, there are similar programs for community. Okay. So this is an individual feedback where you can put in how much you drank and you get feedback. Is, am I understanding that? Okay. Yep. Okay. So I had three glasses of wine after I came home from work, and then I might get feedback about is that kind of yeah, it's more it's more of a, a, a individual longer, a longer like okay. minute thing about your current you know behavior behavior and usage. Right. Okay. So standards for um, servers in terms of being impaired or unimpaired, hopefully, okay. unimpaired um, servers. Um, so having a, a BAT standard for servers, for instance, would be one option. Mm -hmm. um, public intoxication ordinance might be one. Um, and then some, um, some way of addressing um, the affordability of alcohol. So uh, all you can drink specials or happy hour, uh, Drinking competitions or another, um, so addressing that somehow at a, a policy level or at a um, organizational level. Or education level, okay. Uh, maybe um, enhancing noise regulations, noise ordinance regulations. Again, this is just brainstorming, so. Anything else from your group that's um, different? Um, one more thing would be to, um, to regulate more the um, hours of sales for alcohol. Okay. And I recognize that um, some of the things that we're writing down may or may not be in our sphere of influence, but it's part of the generation of ideas. OK, anything else? Yeah, you guys. Neighborhood disruption, and I apologize, I'm not repeating the responses, so I'll do that at the end. I was, I'm supposed to be doing that so that Valley Media can record that, Valley Works Media. But what about you guys? What do you have for ideas that have not already been shared related to neighborhood disruption? Um, holding landlords accountable by making sure they manage their current properties. Okay, so landlord accountability. And, uh, increasing direct consequences uh, when people the neighborhood. So okay. Ticket, okay. Your ordinance problem, which is already okay. Okay. So, and, and specifically, this someone said public intoxication ordinance, but property, also this property piece of, yep. as well. So, not just Disturbing I look ordinance. publicly intoxicated, but also I've done some things. Okay. Mm -hmm. um. Um, promoting. Go ahead. Uh, promoting responsible gatherings. <clears throat> yes, not all parties need to be out of control. You can have 20 to 30 people over from your organization on campus and still be responsible and you know, to play music. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, increase educational education on campus and on campus students. Okay, so we talked about schools and others doing oh, reminders, right. but kind of very specific education. Okay. And then. You know, this could tie back to the landlord accountability, but where can students call if they're afraid to, mm -hmm. um, you know, talk about their landlord and their property and the mistreatment of their property? Because um, we, it is my belief that that does play a well, big part into the disruption in the neighborhoods is the mm -hmm. lack of care for. Okay, so uh, care for property from, and you're specifically talking about from the, from the landlord caring for the property versus the tenants mistreating their properties. We definitely hear both sides of that, but landlord, landlord maintenance or care. Okay. Kind of okay. correlation to alcohol is if it's a nicer apartment, then you won't necessarily want to have a lot of people over for a party. To trash it. Okay. Yep, yep. To use, yeah? Anything else that Brandon missed? Or are you guys comfortable with that list? Oh, uh, smaller rides home for specific stops. Rides home. Promoting uh, rides home. Promoting safe rides at home and then um, possibly having those rides be smaller so that only 10 people are being dropped off at a spot or anything else. 
So this was related to the boss issue, okay? Or question. Environmental issues like increasing lighting. Hmm, okay. As part of disruption disorder. It's in a couple of columns, right? Yeah, yeah, so we'll have that again. But OK, so lighting might be here, but it might also be related to the safety issues. And the OK? Neighborhood disruption might not happen if lights are on and everybody sees what you're doing. OK? All right, and how about you guys in the back? So it's good going last. Well, and that's fine. We'll switch the order so you get to be the spokesperson. But what's new? I, I think you're missing a uh, uh, cleanup of the after party. Mm, OK. Specifically. We so have an ordinance for that. You already covered the noise, which is another thing that we were. OK. So some level of cleanup requirement. And somebody mentioned um, a nuisance property ordinance where like, a landlord would get fined after a second complaint mm. or some sort of situation like that. Bringing the landlord to a full right to deal landlord, the weather stations that they both on the property and recorded, which was the next step after the, uh, the first step. So, okay. looking more at the landlord to enforce that. And then one of the other things we talked about is uh, reaching off campus students. It sounds like the students that live mm. on campus uh, get a lot of you know, good instruction type thing, but maybe we don't get to the kids that are off campus. So on campus education, school work, but also the off campus students. Yeah. Yeah, I heard you guys talking about that. But freshman year, you're still in the dorms and you get all kinds of education and support. But how do we reach those that are not sitting in the dorms? OK. Anything that was missed by you guys at that table? All right. So you guys get to start. We'll talk about the death, injury, risky behavior. I understand that strategies might cross over. So they're not, the columns are not necessarily independent. But are there new things that haven't already been talked about as strategies in the neighborhood issue that landed for you guys in strategies related to death, injury, and risky behavior? Well, we did talk about limiting the amount that someone can be served. But that seems like that's already a lot. Okay. So, okay. So, maybe something related to enforcement or education or something in this arena. What else related to death, injury, risky behavior from your group? Uh, someone to call to walk home with. And the emergency problem, but the city might have blue lights and blue buttons, what do they call it? The emergency. Blue emergency call. Everybody's landline, we've got some, but that being said, maybe the city's gone to cameras, we do cameras, put cameras places so we can track people, we can see people. Better way to put cameras on the bridge that's going across the university. Okay. So camera monitoring, I'm hearing. Was there something also related to the phones beyond having some kind of a system to call people if you need help? OK, OK, so hardwire phones beyond the campus. OK. OK. So actual physical piece of that, all right? Anything else? I think hands-on self-defense So it was on the previous sheet as well, but also here because it might impact risky behavior. OK, good. All right, I'm going to the center group now. What else do you have to add related to death, injury, risky behavior as far as strategies? Um, the of the servers as well as the owners as well as serving. OK. 
about the hard alcohol is like, cheaper often than beer. It's always shot. Okay. So safe rides in a variety. Server education. Okay. Anything else that was not shared? Um, well, I for the first screening and <laughs> screening when people are arrested, screening when mm. people are. Okay. So screening for AODA to identify people that might need specific assistance yeah. so that we don't see them over and over yeah. again. Okay. That was a big topic last time that a smaller percentage of the population might be, you know, have a large impact if they over and over and over again drunk have drunk driving offenses or other things. Okay. How about you guys? Uh, so really, like a lot of that stuff we have done, okay. street streetlighting. Don't repeat, because we don't have enough time, so just give me new stuff. Uh, limiting drink specials, uh, safe drinking versus excessive drinking. Safe drinking, so promoting safe drinking? Yep. Okay. You know, one of the things that I, as I was looking at the notes, um, you know, someone last time said, you know, drinking can be fun. It can taste good and be fun. How do we talk about just having normal fun, not excessive drinking. So somebody shared that last time. So yeah. Just, on the safe rides, mm. we emphasize the safe ride home, not the safe ride to our Oh, safe rides home. Gotcha. We want them to walk to, all of us to walk to, they can walk home with somebody because it's good exercise, right? Yeah. <laughs> How about you guys? Anything new here? Um, we talked about maybe providing public busing or one line that would run later across the city. Um, and looking at providing ride vouchers for patrons, expansion of the safe ride program that the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all kinds of things around transfer, the transportation piece of it. How can we creatively look at that? Anything else in this one? Okay, so to respect time, let's talk about culture. Any new ideas that, I yes? I was just saying that one, there wasn't any mention of the ordinance, and I think a ticket is a more immediate consequence and mm. a tangible consequence than the distant notion, well, I might get hurt or I might die. Mm -hmm. Getting a ticket is much more real than that to people, and I think okay. it has a greater influence on behavior. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Anything else that we don't have up here? All right, so culture, anything new that hasn't already been talked about? We've talked about transportation and ordinance and other things. Anything here that is different, that education, we've talked about all of those strategies. Many of them cross over. Prevent bad parenting. Prevent bad parenting. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. Well, on the cultural side, we thought the, uh, the landlord uh, notification, cooperation, maybe the, the, uh, the nuisance property, that there was like more of a strategy there overall. Mm -hmm. That that could impact things. So, okay. Kitty. So we just talked briefly about um, the, the culture of having alcohol at many different events, like, you know, fun runs or marathons, or if you're fundraising for a, a school, um, alcohol is often involved. Specifically, often connected to fundraising because it's that's how you make your money. I hear that a lot. We make our money because of the alcohol being there, and it is a real thing. So, yeah. Integrating students with the neighborhoods, I, I can tell you, you will not have a lot of success. Students you know, don't feel part of the neighborhood. Mm. Don't feel like they are truly neighbors with uh, people. Good. Real people that live in the third ward and Mm-hmm. So really working on that. The more people know each other. Yep. That whole social connectedness and yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So there's, I know there's conversation about that, but to help me connect to alcohol or other substances. There are interactions we've had with Okay, population. Okay, so some of the, okay. All right, treatment need. Okay, I'm trying to watch time. Yeah, Steve. Uh, I think we did in the first one touch on hours of operation, uh, which you know is tough under uh, uh, a law, but it, it certainly could be an organizational practice, and that, that can change culture as well as can things like uh, uh, again whether special events or private settings, uh, watching uh, events that primarily focus on alcohol. Where alcohol is, and especially excessive consumption of alcohol, seems to be the objective of the event. Uh, there's no other reason for gathering. Uh, so, mm. yeah. Uh, so excessive consumption as an event. Yeah, I'm hearing you. So looking at that, because that's part of culture, <laughs> is that the purpose of coming to this event is to drink a lot. Okay. Yeah, Al. Um, I think possibly addressing or even limiting the number of places where alcohol can be purchased. Mm -hmm. Almost everywhere in our community you can purchase alcohol. Yeah. One thing that really resonated with me at our last meeting that I thought more about is the uh, comparison between grocery stores and places that serve alcohol. And then as I thought about the fact that there's nowhere in the downtown area for anybody to buy groceries. Mm -hmm. But there's alcohol, places that sell alcohol almost everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's part of the culture that we, that we currently have. Yeah. So the availability, which is one of, if you look through some of the literature, availability is one of the A's that we have um, in looking at you know, the challenge of uh, misuse of something. So, and for instance, we, we do limit our alcohol licenses. Mm -hmm. As a possible solution, we also have limits on the number of places that can sell, you know, mm -hmm. shop stores and yeah. gas so, stations. So not only alcohol outlets, but all kinds of other places sell alcohol. So anything else? Just more education on what normal drinking looks like. Mm. Yeah. Education on normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, maybe to tag on to that, you know, we, we talked about the comparison of Wisconsin and the rest of the country. I would be willing to bet the general population doesn't even realize that, how, what our culture is related to alcohol compared to the rest of our nation. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you had had someone that you know move into Eau Claire that didn't come from Wisconsin and say, this is different. Yeah? I mean, I think most of us have had that experience in Eau Claire. So. Anything else? Any strategy that either you have thought about as we've talked about or that isn't on these lists that your group talked about? We will capture all of this. And in order to end at 4.30, we're going to do a start into the next conversation, but we're not going to have time to do as much work on it as I had hoped. But I want to make sure that people feel comfortable thinking about these are some ideas that we generated today that we thought about in advance. Yeah. For agency cooperation. Mm. For any of these, really, in some ways. OK. okay. Mm -hmm. the big private, or the big public institutions, but also the main private institutions that are involved. Good. And that might be, you know, that's you guys around these tables. So again, you know, is there something that needs to happen moving forward to keep that collaboration alive would be potentially a strategy. So I see a lot of things under neighborhood disruption and disorder. Many of these are repeats. A lot of ideas under death, injury, risky behavior. Again, they cross over. And a lot of ideas identified related to culture. You guys did good work. That was a lot. Um, my ask is that you leave at least one summary on the table. If you're willing to leave all of them, then we will make sure it's compiled and gotten out to you by the end of the week so that you can reflect on it. If there's something that all of a sudden as you're 
walking or driving home today that you're like, I should have thought about this strategy that you want to make sure we get and add it to the list, we will. So just email me and you should all have my email. I'm the one that emailed directly to you earlier. Um, the hope, which we will do at our next meeting, was to talk a little bit through where this all started in some ways, why you guys are specifically at this table. It didn't, you know, these issues did not start this March, but um, the specific table of conversations did start. Um, to talk a little bit about the public good order ordinance and to start talking about is that one of the strategies that we want city council to consider as one of the many strategies that came up in our list and we are intending to really get feedback on that as one of the strategies as we move forward. What I want to do in the last couple of minutes we have before we close is just to remind people about that public good ordinance and what um, what was included in it. So on your tables, and you can take this with you because we will be talking about it at the next meeting, is a half sheet of paper that talks through, so it looks like this, um, that kind of summarizes what happened at City Council and what the public good ordinance additions and changes were. So a reminder, this was an existing ordinance. Okay? Some people were not aware of that. There was existing language. The, yours isn't all highlighted, but the ordinance itself that was brought forward to City Council looks like this. So you should have a copy of this if you don't already. There's a half sheet of paper that the hope was today we'd talk a little bit about, you know, what do you think is good about this? What, how will this address our problems? What's not so good about this language? What are you concerned about? Again, at the public hearing for this ordinance, the decision was made to take a little pause and have this group conversation. This is not the only thing that will come next, but this is one potential thing that could come next. What I'd like you to do is look at this ordinance and think a little bit about, does anything in this ordinance help us move forward in solving some of the problems? And if we did that, again, not talking about process concerns or issues, but content concerns and issues, um, what makes sense? So a reminder, and they're bulleted on this half sheet of paper, the changes are in underline in the ordinance. And on the back, there's a addition. So that's not all underlined, but that's new language. So the front, the changes were framing language at the beginning of the ordinance that just talked about why we would all e we even want to be looking at this again. So that's 9.5.6.050 public behavior. There's a little bit of new language around public good order. Those are underlined statements. There are new sections on physical neighborhood disruption and public intoxication. So all of that underlined content is new. Um, and then there's content on the back related to, um, related to motor bus or vehicle for hire. So that's the back content and that's new language as well. Um, so for the next meeting, we are gonna have a specific conversation about this. We will also summarize all of the different strategies you came up with, and we'll do some prioritization around which ones make sense going forward. This one we will specifically talk about, though, because the City Council has asked us to do that, and we'd like to come back and say either, boy, we think that this makes sense to do something related to this, or we have other things that we need to prioritize. Does that make sense? Yes? Can you clarify again? So section two on the vehicle for hire. Yep, if you read at the top, section two says this is this whole section created to read as follows. So do you see that italicized section? Section two says that blah, 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 entitled location, time of stops. That's all newly created. So um, 9.79020 and 9.79030 are entirely new sections, even though that's not underlined that that italicized line at the top of the page signals that these are all new. Okay? So just contents. Yeah, Steve. I think you did a great job at it. If I could, I'd tr try to take one other slice at it. It's broad mm -hmm. brush. So make a policy statement, a purpose statement. So that really tries to get, frankly, to that culture issue we talked about. Basically, just making a, a shared statement, which is sometimes what council does. We're just saying, we think this, this is wrong. You know, this is a problem, and we're trying to do something about it. It's not the only thing to be done about it, but yeah. it's a, trying to take a, a, a step in the direction I, I would propose on that culture side. Mm -hmm. The other one is uh, public intoxication, which is 
excessive focus, intentionally focused on excessive consumption. But uh, again, different thoughts on, on whether it successfully did it, but it's about high levels of consumption and uh, the safety effects on individuals or others running from it. And then broadly, I would say the third one is neighborhood disruption, either directly in a uh, kind of quasi-public nuisance, but sort of the, the after effects of, of large parties that are often driven as a secondary effect of alcohol. And then uh, one of the issues that at least was heard about how people are getting it, and that was the, the traveling to, has nothing to do with bringing back, but the traveling to on the bus. So I, at least to me, they're in those three broad Buckets. categories. Yep. Uh, purpose, excessive consumption, and secondary neighborhood disruption often resulting from excessive consumption. So we will be talking more about that ordinance, okay? And I want to get you out on time, but can I answer a quick question? Just so I know, I guess, some questions we have. 30 years later, I think this law was 1952. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That existed? Yeah. <clears throat> With your help, you can educate us what we think for the next week. How did we live this long without mm, okay. What did they do to enforce the travel stuff, the drinking? What laws do we have now that we're trying to make better for the future? Sure. So how does it fit into That's the context the now? Well, yeah. There is no public intoxication ordinance currently. And, uh, so that's all new language. That's why it's new. Of individuals currently. Mm -hmm. There is some carryover on, under public nuisance under some of the behaviors in the neighborhood disruption, but they're not handled uh, as well as uh, we think perhaps they could be. So all those issues are new, and um, yeah. the policy statement, uh, the purpose statement, would be, would be new as well. Somebody and we'll give. Or somebody's intoxicated at Jazz Fest. Mm -hmm. What citation is written? Unless they do something, yeah. And we'll talk more about this next meeting and because I want to respect people's time. But yeah, I think that's part, this was developed because there isn't something as specific as was looked at as a tool in the toolbox um, for people, for us to utilize. And I think that's exactly why we're having this conversation. So we will get some background information out via email before next week's meeting but that will be part of our discussion so i'm seeing lots of like head turning and uh, maybe maybe not but i think that's part of what we need to talk about next so i want to get you guys out on time so i'm going to keep moving um that there there and i think vagueness is one of the words that is an important piece of how do we move forward next so i appreciate that feedback we will get there. So, the and that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Vagueness was a content issue related to the concerns with the ordinance, and that's why you guys are all here together to talk about that as one of our strategies. So, next meeting we will look at the strategies and the strategies slash solutions, and hopefully do some prioritizing. Uh, which of these do we actually think we want to work on? We will discuss the city ordinance and we will think about where we want to go next. Next meeting is the last one scheduled, but that doesn't mean we're done if the group together makes a decision that there's more work that needs to be done. Um, sticky note, take one minute to write down a word on a sticky note about how you thought today went. <laughs> and honesty is really important, you guys. That's how we learn from each other. One, one word, one phrase about how today went. And please give feedback. I mean, we really, that's, that's an important piece of this. All right, ready? Anybody at this table willing to share? One person, go. Exciting. Exciting. What about the back table? Open the lid. Open the lid. What about you guys? One person. Progress. Progress. What about this table? Not enough time to get to that next step. Uh, yeah, frustrating. Frustrating. I think it's a little frustrating. I'll, I'll own that with you guys. So, all right. Thank you for being here. Our next meeting is at the RCU building, back where we started. So, um, we are across um, at the RCU building next week, same time. Okay? NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. 
If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.